Hi everyone, welcome back to Bayonetta on Non-Stop Infinite Climax. This time we're going to be fighting the Lumen Sage, Chapter 16. Penultimate chapter. This is pretty much the end of the game. Also long cutscenes. What follows those living in the light is nothing but the profound. Empty darkness born from the shadow that grows longer as they approach the brilliant radiance. To truly see, your eyes must be open to both light and dark. Don't you agree, my dear child? Mummy's here! Mummy's here! Mummy! Little one. You've arrived. My dear, sweet Cereza. My, my! Why the grim face, my dear? As a child, your smile was warmer than the sun. So, you are the last of the Lumen Sages. I am indeed. My name is Balder, but if you so choose, you may address me as Father, there is much you have forgotten. It has been 500 years since we last met. If your memories were still intact, this would have been a much more emotional reconciliation. How did you get the girl? Where shall I begin? We, the Lumen Sages, and your Umbra Witches, have long been the overseers of history, each bearing witness with their own eye. This is how our universes existence was preserved. However, for 500 years, you have been exiled from the world's affairs. You are the left eye of the eyes of the world. Could you dispense with the riddles and just tell me what these sodding eyes actually are? Your years of slumber have caused you to forget many things, even as we stand on the verge of the resurrection of the Creator. The resurrection of Jubileus. There is but one way to return your epic of forgotten memories and open your Eye of the Overseer. Your uncorrupted eye had to be exposed to the history it could not see. Ah. Your battles, your struggles, everything you've experienced in this town has been a stepping stone for your enlightenment. It has all been done for the left eye. I've had enough of your philosophical pretensions. I won't ask again. Where did you get the girl? <laughs> your question has been answered. All this has been done to awaken the left eye. For that, you had to see yourself once more. You are truly beyond salvation, Sage. Ah, salvation. Such a curious word. I mark the path to salvation with light. However, no matter how brilliant that light grows, the darkness within the human heart grows even darker. Light, dark, and chaos between.
Three realities, once split, shall be brought together to create a new universe in the image of the old. To these ends, leading to the Festival of Resurrection 500 years ago, I fanned the flames of terror, spurring on the witch hunts. However, despite the people's belief in the return of Jubileus, the Creator, the left eye was out of reach. Since then, I have devoted myself to this town's prosperity, and now it is time for my preparations to bear fruit. Jubileus will be resurrected. We will become the eyes of the world, and a new universe will take over. Fluffy! I could never call the man behind this nightmare father. Great speech, big guy. Luca. Getting a bit ahead of ourselves, aren't we, Mr. Big Shot Ithaval Executive? Salvation, light. You take this entrepreneurial philosophy a bit seriously, don't you? But it's all diarrhea of the mouth, if you ask me. History is littered with famous genocidal figures, just like you. Or, should I say, infamous genocidal figures. You must be Luca, journalist extraordinaire. I must say, I'm truly impressed you've made it this far, child. Like father, like son, I suppose. What? Luca, Luca, Luca. Your father had problems with my philosophies. It's fine to investigate, but when malicious rumors start to spread, I must see to it that they come to a stop. For being kind enough to ascertain that my long lost razor was at the bottom of some lake. I granted him his final wish, and accepted his permanent resignation. You bastard! You are of no use to me. However, I am not without dignity. I will allow you to die in the same manner as your father. <laughs> Luca! Well... I guess my plan has gone right out the window. <laughs> Such a shame that sacrifice had to be made. But if destiny is not fulfilled soon, this tragedy will be repeated ad nauseum. Mm. Speaking of tragedy, I suppose you've met John. While she sealed you away and kept you from trouble, after falling into our hands, she's been incredibly useful. Although her distinct lack of obedience required a bit of mental reprogramming. Her tragic end led you directly to me, just as Blair. The time for awakening the left eye is soon. Fear not, my dear, sweet Cereza. That's it, Cereza. 
Do not fear your fate. Stand tall, my child. Realize your true potential. Sereza, we are one, my child. That was weird. This whole cutscene. It's a. Uh, it's really hammy. Baldur, he's definitely one of the highlights of the game. The very first time you meet him. Just because of how ridiculous he is. Not to mention his dead peacock, which apparently sprouted its wings behind him right now. That being said, this boss fight is surprisingly uh, disappointing because of uh, Baldur's damage output. It's something that even Porch Tudo is better at. That being said, his attacks are fairly quick, so it's not impossible to continuously get hit. Getting a perfect platinum can be a bit challenging. Like right there! That attack you did right there didn't even damage me! Kind of weird. How platinum thought it'd be fine to have a boss that have such small damage output. I, Well, this is my first time doing this in this level of difficulty, and uh, Baldur did quite a bit of damage right there. But still, in the user difficulties, even in hard mode, it's nowhere near as high. Also, he doesn't have a lot of health. Like, as much as every other boss, if, you must be, if I must be honest, but still not very much. Only one life bar per, per phase. And he's got as many phases as the other characters. I mean, bosses. Which is... For a penultimate boss, I expected a something a lot harder basically climax get eaten by our fateful Gomorrah who will not betray us in the second game give me some points anyway of course this is the penultimate boss so he will not be so easily defeated and the way he managed to handle our most common demon summon demon <laughs> is kind of cool. Gomorrah is not really dead, by the way. It's a demon. Anyway, can you do something special for me, Balder? I know you got some special moves that don't just involve slashing me with your beam sword thing. Uh, actually, in the better you are this game. The less uh, of uh, Baldur's phases you're going to have to deal with. Ah, there we go. He's going to throw a building at us. That's kind of cool. Very first time I had this cutie thrown at me, I actually failed it. It says evade, but we're actually going to punch it back at him. Or kick it back at him. Or headbutt it back at him? I'm not sure. Bayonetta chose a strange way of dealing with that. Come on, Balder. Yeah, he parried it. He's almost... Ah, uh, here we go. His laser. His laser satellite. System... I couldn't see that. Anyway. The laser takes some time to reach us, so... The camera shifted over here because it clearly wanted you to go all the way over there. Yeah, Wicked Weaves are extremely effective against Baldur. He doesn't dodge them very well. Anyway, time for our second Demon Summon attempt against him. This time with Skolopedra. Sorry if I misspelled his name. Or pronounced it wrong, rather. I do love Baldur's nonchalant way of dealing with your demon summons. Makes him seem so badass. It's such a pity he has such bad damage output. 
He definitely oozes style, that's for sure. I mean, look at that. He's clearly just fooling around with you. This cutscene looks that cutscene looks utterly ridiculous in the uh, higher uh, when you're, you when you uh, make him angry though. He's uh, going all beam sword uh, aggressive on you, but now by the way, he's not fooling around anymore. I think this is a part where either you're spam parry or do use dodge offset very often. Except I'm not too good at it. I don't know. This attack stuns you, but it doesn't deal very much damage against you. And Balder never <laughs> really capitalizes on it either. So it's such a non-move against you. Oh, here. He's going to actually throw his satellite at us. That's going to be effective. It even reaches us much faster than it really should. Anyway, let's throw it back at him. Repeatedly. How can anyone fail this? We've done this against John. Come on. Yeah, I can basically finish this by either Witch Time or just Wicked Weaves. I think I'd use Witch Time. More appropriate. Uh, but it'd be much easier to use Wicked Weave. Yeah, I should probably use Wicked Weaves. Much safer. He's gonna get killed by bullets! That's not appropriate! Even though, ironically, that's how you beat him. Ah! No, 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 no! There we go. Don't fuck with a witch. Yeah, we're not quite done yet. We have to gu guide the bullet. Well, the lipstick. Straight into his forehead. I don't... I'm pretty sure it's a game over, pseudo game over if you fail this, but uh, it's kind of difficult to fail. Really difficult, in fact. May Jubilus, the creator, grace you! Uh, did I get a platinum? I don't know if I did. I will find out after this super long cutscene, I guess. To give you credit, Bayonetta. You never cease to impress. You haven't seen the half of it. I've seen enough. Well, that about wraps it up, huh? Not yet. No need to be afraid, little one. The nightmare is over. Everything was just a dream. You're a strong little girl. There is nothing you cannot overcome. Mommy? Did you find it? What you were looking for? Yes. I found it. So don't you worry anymore. You just keep your treasure safe too. 
sweet dreams, little one. Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words. I'm not afraid anymore, Mummy. No matter what, there's nothing I cannot do. Bayonetta! What's happening to you? And now it is done. The right eye oversees the light. The left eye oversees the darkness. Two eyes to oversee the world. It was never the woman known as Bayonetta that I set my sights upon. It was you as a child. Cereza, that I saw. For she was the one who saw the world through innocent eyes. And she was the one who could give rise to a new history. It was her energy that could awaken the left eye. This has all worked out splendid. <laughs> Let us begin, Cereza. The time is at hand. Now, the resurrection of Jubileus shall be completed. We are the eyes overseeing the world. We are the eyes overseeing a new era, a new reality, to which we will devote ourselves eternally. Okay, so, um, I gotta ask. Ah, only gold. Took way too much damage. Um, I gotta ask. Is Bayonetta her own mother or something? Like, I don't understand the whole, uh, relation she has with Cereza. I just don't. And I, don't, I feel if I try to understand it, it's just gonna make things worse. Also, oh, nice detail here. Angel attack, but no one's there, because... Bad end, right? Well, the game really wants to pretend that this is how the game is going to end. Because this is the next screen. Just the Earth. And it says Epilogue. Requiem. <laughs> I probably would just mangle that word so badly. But yeah. 
There is one more chapter, and it is the actual final boss. No worries, this is not how the game ends. Um, I gotta mention something else, though. I've seen people say that Bayonetta is, like, the strongest female protagonist in all of gaming. I don't agree with that. I mean, an actual strong protagonist, male or female or monster or alien, will not have this type of story development happen to them. Completely disabled, kidnapped, pseudo-kidnapped or whatever, and have to be rescued by someone else. Because we're going to be playing as someone else for half of this, well, not half, but a good portion of this next chapter. And that just doesn't happen to an actual strong protagonist. When you're playing, when you're making a story about a strong protagonist, unless you're doing it in a specific way where there's multiple strong protagonists, you always keep your perspective on them, the strong protagonist. And besides this part, there's also the parts uh, in the story scenes where it just suddenly like changes to Luca's perspective, just a oogle at Bayonetta's body, which is just freaky. It's the, the limbs are way too long for me to appreciate that. I love the gameplay of this game and the music and uh, quite a other variety of things, but story-wise and character-wise too, it's a little weak. I don't, I don't feel it. I don't feel that Bayonetta is a strong protagonist, as many people like to preach. Anyway, that was a out-of-place rant for me. Hope you've all enjoyed this video and hope you have a nice day. Next time, final chapter. Bye-bye.